As I rise um, to adjourn in memory and ask that we adjourn in memory of the Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin. You know, it, it saddened my heart last Thursday when I woke up and discovered that Aretha was gone. I knew that she was ill and that it would just be a matter of time. But this is a woman who's been a part of my life, seems like all of my life. Her music has really shaped my spirit and my soul and has motivated me even beyond the capacity that I believed I had. Her songs like Respect, if you want a do-right woman, you gotta be a do-right man to give you mission and purpose in your life. She began singing just as a child. She was born in 1942 in Memphis, Tennessee. And she began singing in her father's church in Detroit. She sang with the famous Mahalia Jackson and so many others. She taught herself how to play the piano, and then she learned to read sheet music and began to compose songs herself. She was truly a musical genius. She began singing at the age of 14, and so she spent over 60 years as an artist. Not just someone we knew about, someone who was an active singer for 60 years, whose voice was just as strong the day she passed as when she first began to sing. She also was noted for the fact that, she, um, that when she found a song and sang that song, the artist probably didn't want to sing it again, like Natural Woman, because at that point she owned that song and she became that person. And she gave that song, as most artists said, new life and new meaning to the song itself. She was brilliant in her musical abilities. Most of us were stunned in 2015 when she sang the opera by Pavarazzi. She had been only asked that day if she thought she could stand in for him because he couldn't make it. And she said, well, let me listen to it. Let me hear it. And she listened to it and she sang it, and all of us were in awe of this woman's ability to sing any type of music, whether it, was, whether it was gospel, whether it was jazz, whether it was blues, whether it was rock and roll, she could master that song and give it new life. And so we were all shocked when I saw her on television. I was amazed at the, at the Grammy singing this song that she had only been asked to sing that day, that many artists would take a lifetime to learn to master. She was an activist. When we talk about activists today, someone asked me, you know, is it unusual that activists are now stepping out and saying things and fighting for social justice? And I had to remind them that so many other artists before the ones we know today did that, participated actively in the civil rights movement, and she did. She got permission from her father to travel with Dr. King and to sing at all of his rallies because she believed so strongly in what he was doing and knew it would make a difference in her life and, life and others to come. She donated money, interestingly enough, and was willing to bail Angela Davis out of jail when Angela Davis was in jail because she felt this sister deserved justice and she deserved to be free. She was noted in so many other kinds of ways that it's amazing to think about that she won every award there was, she won several Grammys. I think 18 Grammys had all kinds of, be, received the Legend Award, the Kennedy Center, Center Honor, the Star of Hollywood Award. She received the, um, the Medal of, of Honor from the President, from Clinton. And she sang for, for probably for every president since 1980. And they all had her in concerts and singing. And she was actually Clinton's favorite singer. And so she, she performed regularly at the White House. She is noted as a person who was kind and gentle and inspired so many young artists to sing and to perform. And she leaves to mourn four sons and four granddaughters who used to talk about how they would walk in her house and she would be sitting at the piano playing these songs that would inspire them to do great things. Rita was my favorite singer. And I know that when I would travel across the country, when I traveled from New York to Ghana for eight hours, I would listen to Aretha without stopping. And she would somehow or another make the ride a whole lot smoother, and she would always make me feel better when I ended it. Someone has said the queen is dead, but her music lives on, and so does she. There's probably not a person in this house who cannot think of their favorite song by Aretha. And when I ask people, what was your favorite song? Everybody tells me different ones. I can remember in the dorms at UCLA, respect was in every window, in every hall when, when the song came out in 67. Everybody wanted to listen to respect. Everybody wanted a do-right woman. 
Everyone wanted, I, there's no way for me to love you unless you let me love you. Ain't no way. Those songs somehow or another not only gave life but gave spirit to so many. She did amazing things for the artists and for the whole concept of black music and black history and black feeling because not only did black people feel the expressions of Aretha, every group felt Aretha. And there was not one who could not identify with at least one song, or if not all of her songs, that made you feel so much better. A woman of tremendous depth and soul is gone, but her music lives on. And I ask that we not only adjourn in memory for Aretha, but we think about her regularly.